Hi y'all, welcome to my shop where I'm passionate about wood turning and I want to share that passion with you. I want to talk about something today that might be a little controversial to some wood turners and that's uh, stuff for wood turners that come from Harbor Freight. Now I know a lot of people uh, don't think a whole lot about, about Harbor Freight, uh, the quality of their merchandise, but I want to show you some of the things that I think are pretty good buys and maybe a few things that aren't good buys, but when I look around my shop I've got a lot of stuff from Harbor Freight that seems to serve me a need at a pretty reasonable price and I want to share that uh, with you. Uh, this is primarily for those in the United States. If you're outside the United States you may have a store somewhat similar to this, but basically it's a store where all the merchandise just about comes from China and it's uh, very, very inexpensive to say the least. Uh, one of the things about Harbor Freight uh, don't ever walk into a Harbor Freight store without carrying a catalog with you so you have at least a 125% uh, off coupon on one item and then you got 20% off on everything you buy or 20% off on uh, 20 off on a, on a single item so you can go out to your car, put stuff down, go back in and buy something else. Um, I get one of these in the mail just about once a month. I get something in uh, an email flyer from them uh, about <laughs> seems like about once a week and the pricing is always strange sometimes uh, what's in the store is cheaper than the, uh, what's in the catalog because it might be a better sale on at the store uh, sometimes what you get in the email is a better buy than what you see in the catalog so you kind of kind of explore the items to uh, see what uh, what looks like a good deal but let me get on with with some of the kinds of things that I want to uh, that I've gotten a pretty good deal from first of all when you do go in the store frequently You'll, it, there's a coupon that you'll bring into the store with you that'll have, you'll get some item for free. And let me just give you some examples of some of the things I've got free, just showing up for shopping. I got this 25 foot uh, tape measure. I got uh, a whole bunch of these flashlights. Um, I got, I got one or more of these, uh, these clamps. Um, let's see, what else did I get? Got this uh, uh, multi multimeter or one very similar to it. Uh, I think I might have gotten a pair of, pair of scissors uh, uh, from them uh, free. So that's just some of the items you just you, you get something free for just showing up. Some of the items I found are especially good deal. Uh, they're not the highest quality, not like you'd get at a, uh, a woodworking store, but for me the quality seems to be adequate for what I'm doing, and that's these uh, screw clamps. Uh, they are a real good buy, and I have different. I keep different sizes, the uh, 12 inch. I, I find these invaluable um, in using on the bandsaw. I cut a notch on it so I can uh, drill holes and square stuff. I use a smaller one when I want to maneuver something small on the band bandsaw. So I keep several of these sizes around in there. Uh, they're very very helpful. When it comes to uh, flashlights, uh, like I say, these are you can get these for free. I got a kit of about two of these. This is very, uh, very handy. It's flex a lot. I use that for looking inside hollow forms. It came with a little smaller one that, that tore up. Um, probably somewhat obsolete. Uh, at least I don't change my oil anymore, but it's a strap uh, wrench for uh, oil filters. I find this handy sometimes to uh, undo a chuck that gets, gets stuck. And you uh, get a couple of these. They're, they're modestly expensive. Um, I always keep two pair of these uh, ear muffs, ear protectors to lower the decibels when I've got a saw going and i got a dust collecting going and got my air filtration unit going and I keep two of them in the shop, one on each end of the shop so if I've got somebody visiting they've got a pair as well. These are only usually about two bucks each uh, or so on, on sale. There are There's better stuff but it definitely lowers the decibels to uh, a safe level so I find these, these helpful. Along the same line of safety, I find these safety glasses very inexpensive. They're made by a quality safety company, I think it's Western Safety. Uh, these are about two bucks a piece. Sometimes you can find about the same price elsewhere, but they fit over prescription lenses, so I keep a pair of these on each end of the, each end of the shop. Let's talk about calipers. Let me clear this off so we can get a little close-up view of some of this stuff. All right, let's talk about calipers, some of my favorite caliper deals. You get this set of calipers for about $9.00 got a vernier caliper that's very handy uh, not the highest quality but for a lot of things knocking around if you drop it on the floor you know it'll take a lick and keep on ticking uh, a little six inch pocket ruler I use this a lot um, these are rather small 
um, calipers. Uh, you've got got these calipers. Uh, you can use these to measure the the uh, thickness of a of a small bowl or a box. You've got inside calipers. You can make sure the inside of a box has got uh, square walls. Uh, you've got a set of dividers. This is great for marking things on the end of a lathe for uh, uh, your 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 tenon. These aren't real large. Uh, and they don't have the strongest springs, but you know, for ten bucks, it's a it's a pretty good deal. And then you get this nice little box. I use this as a depth gauge for uh, measuring the depth of boxes in small bowls, and it's I find that uh, very very handy. Um, so that's not a bad deal. All right, the magnets. That's item number 67488. eight. They're three dollars for a package of uh, I think ten. Uh, this is a five sixteenths inch size. So they're a little bit stronger. But I have found some a little cheaper that are a little bit uh, smaller than this. Uh, not quite as good, but they're about ten cents a piece off eBay. Another kit item. I haven't made it. I haven't made a video of these. I, I may have to do that. And that's a screwdriver kit. You buy a six-in-one screwdriver with a neon plastic handle uh, where the parts come out, and you you put a wood handle on it, and you know you got a small and large screw uh, Phillips on one end and a flat flat tip on the other and these kits you can usually get these screwdrivers uh, for about two bucks and break loose the package uh, so that's a that's another kit item. One of my favorite recommendations though is a set of metal lathe tool bits I don't know I don't know if I've got all the parts here but I've got most of them but it comes with about uh, oh five different pieces yeah they're all here you get this little round bit. You can actually make a tool out of that. I think I showed that in an earlier uh, video. It's a quarter inch. This is a high speed steel. Uh, these are tool bits, cut off bits. Uh, this is the regular kind of hollowing bit you typically use for a hollowing tool for a boring bar, and you can make two cutters out of that. That's 5 sixteenths of an inch. Uh, the quarter inch, I haven't found too much use for that. I find that too large for hollowing, so that's extra. 1 16th inch, might find you that useful for something. This, this uh, high speed steel 1 16th inch by a half inch by four and a half inch cutoff bar, I found this to be handy. You can make a small cutoff uh, or parting tool out of it. You can make a chatter tool uh, from it. So that's very handy. Well, this little, this item is number is 40641 five piece M2 high speed steel mini tool bits. Five bucks. You can't beat it. Can't beat it. So that's that's a great little item. You can see where if you make a parting tool, you could make a simple handle like this. I just used a pipe clamp, cut a slot in it, and it's held this way, and it works just fine. Maybe for a parting tool, you might have to come up with a uh, wrap it with tape down here uh, to keep it from coming loose. I've got all this stuff on a list uh, on my my blog. If you look under resources, you'll find that list of Harbor Freight stuff. So. If you're wondering what the item number is, or you can't recall what it's called, it'll it'll be on that uh, that handout. Uh, this pair of cheap uh, scissors, shop scissors, I find these very handy. They're about a buck. You can get them at the dollar store for about the same price, but it, but but they're they're handy. Okay, now let's talk about some wood turning tools. Okay, wood turning tools. Uh, you know, let me turn these around. You see. Harbor Freight sells two sets of wood turning tools. They sell this with a Windsor design with the ash blonde handle. Uh, then they sell a, another set. Uh, this set sells for about $65. Uh, again, 20% off one item, so you know, it's going to be 20% off unless you have a 25% off coupon. These are really uh, cheap tools. It's, it says it's high speed steel. I found the high speed steel to you know, be questionable. Uh, you can recognize it by the type of sparks when you're sharpening and, and the edge just doesn't hold up. The quarter inch spindle gouge I found was absolutely worthless. I don't know whether it's was, it was quality steel or just poor heat treating. I returned it into a, uh, a beading tool. Uh, but that, that was kind of a sorry, sorry tool. Um, the V-point scraper, uh, not bad. 
Uh, I use I still use that a lot. The handle tore up. I had to make another handle, uh, but that that hasn't been a bad tool. Uh, the spindle roughing gouge. Uh, I still it it came with two spindle gouges. I think this is seven eighths, and this one I think they call it a one inch or three quarter. If you grind it straight across, this is not a bad roughing gouge. Just needs sharpening fairly frequently, but. Because of its size and lightweight, I, I tend to use this a fair amount and carry it with me sometimes on demos just because it's it's a uh, small size and it gets the job done. Uh, the the smaller one, you turn sharpen it with a rounder uh, corner. I'll get more d detail on sharpening it in, at a future future video. Uh, I just don't get a lot of use out of this as a spindle gouge, but it's it's there if I need it. Uh, one of the tools, I think this was a skew, I reground, I made this into a separate video on doing a dovetail tool. If you're interested in dovetail tool, you might want to look that up. Uh, but that's, that's one of the things, with this many tools, eight in a package, you do get some steel that you can regrind into some special purpose scraper for little or nothing. Here's another, this was a one inch skew, which I repurposed because I had other skews that better quality. And I made a larger V scraper that I use sometimes for shear scraping. Uh, on on the outside of, of bowls and and it, it does an adequate job I just have to sharpen it a fair amount this is an inside out tool from one of the uh, I think this might have been a round nose scraper I use this sometimes in my box making or for thread chasing uh, projects where it gets fairly little use uh, so uh, sharpening it uh, the low quality steel doesn't really cause me any real real heartache Here's their better set. It's it's somewhat similar. You got eight tools, roughly the same size handles. You get generally somewhat similar tools with some variations. Again, th this instead of a quarter inch gouge, it's got a three eighths inch gouge, which is again similar to the other one. The heat treating on this was just terrible, and it was just absolute uh, rubbish. So I reground it, and I make a beading tool out of it. I use occasionally, or just to demonstrate how you can take an old spindle gouge and make a beading tool, but. Um, Worthless as a spindle gouge. It doesn't come with us with a real spindle roughing gouge. Uh, the one, it's got similar to the other. It's got what you might call a continental gouge, a smaller one and a larger one. If you grind this straight across, you can make do as a roughing gouge until you get one that has more of a U shape. Uh, again, this tool, the smaller one is a spindle gouge. I, I get very little use out of it. Uh, the one inch skew, not bad, except you just got to uh, look at my skew video. You've really got to uh, round over the edges and, and get rid of the sharp edges. And uh, the half inch I rarely, rarely use because of the size, but it's, it's there. And I do use this occasionally as my half inch skew. Uh, I use this tool a fair amount as a, this round nose scraper, and it does a pretty, pretty fair job. Uh, parting tool, I use a quarter inch parting tool a good bit. Still use that one. And then I took one of these tools, I don't remember which one, probably, can't remember which one, but anyway, I, I turned it into a special purpose hollowing uh, tool, and, and this has been very, very handy. I guess what I would say, do I recommend these? Mm, not really. If you were buying a set of tools to begin with, I think you, you've got a better buy if you buy a Benjamin Best set of eight for a few dollars more because it has a true spindle roughing gouge. It also has a bowl gouge and it has a better quality spindle gouge. So you're going to get more for your money, I think, with uh, with a Benjamin Best uh, set. Cleanup tools. Here's another example of that one inch chip brush I cut off. I use this for sweeping off dust and, and nooks and crannies of my bandsaw and, and table saw. For cleaning up, uh, this seven inch bench brush has, has been fairly handy. Uh, I'd rather have a real horse hide one, but they're uh, horse hair, but they're more much more expensive. But this has seen a lot of use, and I've certainly got my money's worth out of it. Uh, this large uh, sweep pan, dust pan, has been very helpful for getting chips up, and I hardly recommend. I highly recommend you getting one of one of these. A couple more items. I have not used this uh, spray gun. I don't do any airbrushing, but I got this on sale uh, based on recommendation from a couple of people. Uh, it's their small detail brush. I'll get around to checking it out one of these days. Japanese flush cut saw. Man, I tell you what, I use this a lot. Nine bucks. Very handy. 
not only when you do plugs and you're cutting off uh, a plug flush with something for some project, but, but also for that final parting cut off the lathe when, when it's just too dangerous or too risky for sending the, the project uh, uh, bouncing across the floor by parting it off with a finish parting it off with a parting tool. So this is very handy. Uh, and for the price, you know, if it gets dull, you just buy another one, but it's very flexible. Get a lot of use out of that one. Let me show you a couple of tools I've got uh, over here on, on my lathe. Uh, first, there's this um, heat gun. I don't use this a lot, but let me tell you, it sure works. 1500 watts is only about nine bucks, so maybe seven bucks on sale, I think, that you can get them for sometimes. Uh, much better than, a, than your wife's hair dryer. Uh, it'll get very, very hot for, for drying a uh, uh, finish uh, on, on a project or any number of, of uses I've, I've gotten out of this. Now this is one of the, one of the best buys that I think a lot of people find and that's this uh, close quarter drill, 3 8 inch. Uh, I've got the keyless drill. I think you can get these on sale for oh, about $30 or so. Uh, it holds up fairly well. I've been using this thing for probably for close to nine years. I don't do as much sanding on bowls as a lot of people but uh, the air intake is down down here on the handle. It does It's not up here so it it doesn't uh, clog up and get the bearings don't get destroyed with sawdust like like uh, some other other tools. Uh, this one again is keyless. Uh, this I started off with a keyed one. Uh, they change models, they change colors periodically, but uh, this is essentially pretty much the same product product, uh, but it's got a, a key on it, which the keyless I find just much handier. So I. When this one went, when I got a really good deal on a, on a sale, I bought this one and put this one in reserve for the eventuality when this one eventually uh, burns up and I'll go back to using this one. But these are very handy for sanding on the inside and the outside of, of bowls. This little parts tray, uh, I think it's a four inch tray, it only cost uh, just a few bucks. Been very handy for putting nuts and bolts and, and little rare earth magnets and washers and things I use for fittings around the lathe. Uh, uh, that's that's been very very handy. This 12 inch stainless steel ruler with etched numbers uh, was only uh, about two dollars, and I find this to be uh, very very handy, very very helpful. The center punch you see me use a lot in marking uh, uh, spindles for turning between uh, between centers. Uh, this brass one, uh, occasionally you'll get one with a bad spring or something, but. Uh, one thing I do like about Harbor Freight, they don't complain, they, they, it's no questions asked. If you got something that's defective, they have to take it back and, and exchange it without any problem. Uh, this is $3 or $4. Uh, I've, I've been using this for years, real happy with it. Uh, I turn this little handle to make it a little easier to push my palm against, but that's been a, been a real handy tool. A box of, of 100 blue nitrile gloves are just very super handy to keep around your shop and you can get them for about 8 bucks uh, from Harbor Freight for 100 of them. Uh, they last a long time. I take them off and, uh, and, and reuse them a number of times for finishing, dyeing. Uh, latex, don't even think about buying latex. It just won't hold up against the solvents like, like nitrile will. A uh, couple of items I don't know that I would buy. But they were on sale and they're cheap and these these disposable face masks. Uh, they don't do a whole lot, I don't think, to protect you against dust. It's more of a nuisance mask, but they were real inexpensive. They loop around. Uh, they tend to fog up when you're wearing safety glasses, so I don't know that I'd recommend them unless you you around a lot of nuisance uh, dust. But it's not going to affect, it's not going to protect you against those very, very small particles. One item I definitely would recommend not getting, and that's their really cheap, uh, diamond hone with these holes in it. Uh, they're just, they don't hold up well. I don't like the holes. They're supposed to gather the swarf, but I think it interferes with a, a quality uh, uh, honing. So if you find any bargains at Harbor Freight that's especially noteworthy for a wood turner, share it in your comments below. Uh, it, it would be helpful to me if you share this video with any of your friends. Stay safe and y'all come back here.